Hello, DevOps friends. Welcome to Opsative. Welcome to Full Stack Live, my live coding channel. Good to have you here. I hope you're having a great Tuesday. It's pretty nice here in Ireland at the moment. And um, I almost, I, I did consider not doing a stream and sitting outside in the sun uh, instead. But then I thought of you and I thought, well, um, I can't do that. I just can't uh, leave you like that. And uh, so here I am in my cozy little office slash studio and uh, we're going to do a little bit of live coding today. I'm, uh, I got a few things to do um, for our hosting infrastructure and uh, I'd also like to do a little bit of work on my Linux course that I'm going to start in um, June. Let me post the uh, appropriate information on our Discord channel where we do our chat. Um, I'm multi-streaming both to my self-hosted owncast instance as well as to Twitch and um, I uh, struggled for a while where to put our chat and uh, then it came to me that um, since I was reviving our community Discord server anyway, we could simply use that Discord server for our stream chat as well. And uh, that's what I did. So uh, hop on over to obstive.com slash Discord and join us in the stream chat channel. Of course, there are also a bunch of other channels where we can have a conversation on and off stream. Well, uh, mostly off stream because I'm, of course, focusing on stream chat during my streams. That being said, uh, let's make this thing an interactive show. Uh, I always love to have conversations with my viewers. Um, don't think that you are going to distract or derail me. Um, that's uh, what I'm uh doing here um anyway if i wanted to completely focus on my work i wouldn't do the work on a live stream so um that's not an issue um but uh, oftentimes um i get a lot of interesting and helpful insight from you my viewers and uh, i do appreciate that so um you're more than welcome to join us in the stream dash chat channel over on the obstative discord Alrighty, so um, I have three things uh, planned for today. Uh, first of all, I'd like to um, make a security change to our hosting infrastructure. There has been a CVE lately um, uh, where uh, people may get um, root access to servers that they have local access to and uh, that's actually the case with a few of our hosting servers where customers can actually ssh in and have local shell access um, while these machines are pretty isolated um, i still want them uh, to be ours and not anyone else's so uh, i'd like to roll out a small change to the syscontrol settings um, and uh, thankfully that's easy to do because we ho uh, run all our infrastructure um, based on the chef configuration management software. So what I'm going to do is um, refresh my memory um, where I have to put uh, syscontrol settings and uh, um, pr I'll then probably simply add this simple setting that will mitigate this uh, exploit. Um, to our infrastructure and it will roll out within a few minutes on hundreds of Linux servers. That's the beauty of um, infrastructure as code. And if you have any questions on this topic, um, hit me. Um, then as my task number two, I'd like to um, implement a few more Prometheus checks. We are in the process of um, rolling out Prometheus as our new monitoring software. and. Uh, for that to replace our existing software, we need to add a few more checks so we have all our bases covered. And um, 
that's something I'd like to do on this stream as well. And for the remaining time, if there is any, I'm going to do a little bit of work on my Linux course um, until we get started at the end of uh, June. There needs to be a lot of work done on uh, course material. I need to prepare slides and uh, uh, additions to the study material that I've chosen, which is a series of books um, that already exist. Uh, and um, so uh, that's also going to be time well spent. Um, and uh, yeah, all throughout this, um, again, pop into chat if you'd like to ask anything, if you'd like to um, share anything about open source software, if there's anything that uh, excites you or something that uh, you've found out lately, um, share it with us and um, we'll all learn from each other. <sighs> yeah, I'm having the um, final rests of a nice oat latte. Uh, recently I've uh, tried um, replacing milk with uh, oat drink, oat milk, however you would call it, and um, uh, I do enjoy it quite a, uh, quite a bit because um, mostly um, it's about the coffee um, and I have pretty uh, nice quality coffee and uh, while the the oat milk adds a little bit of a uh, of an aftertaste that's of course different from cow milk um i do enjoy it quite a bit and it's a good thing to do even the smallest things to help prevent the roughest parts of climate change all righty so let's get started shall we so here we are, um, I have set an issue in our shared infra repository, um, mitigate CVE 2023 32 um, and um, we could even look that up just so, so, so you have a little bit more context here. So it's a uh, bug in the net filter parts of the Linux kernel where um, someone can abuse this bug to perform arbitrary read and write operations on kernel memory and that might lead to unprivileged local users to obtain root privileges. And uh, yeah, simply by denying people access to these uh, NF tables, um, this can be mitigated. So uh, what I'm going to do is add this setting here, kernel.unprivileged underscore user ns underscore clone equals zero and add that to a new setting. All I have to do is find out how to do that because I don't want to do that manually on uh, a few hundred servers. So we need to find out how we can do that with existing uh, chef infrastructure. And that's why I have my um, cookbooks repository here. So if you're not familiar with um, chef, Chef is a configuration management software written in Ruby. Chef actually got me into Ruby coding and um, I've been in love with Ruby ever since. Um, and um, Chef um, provides you with uh, lots of common resources you need to make changes to um, systems. So resources, a resource could be a file that you write or a service that you enable and start or a directory that you create or even more high level resources like um, say an Apache website that you'd like to configure. And um, ever since I started this uh, hosting business back in 2010, um, we've been using um, Chef to do all these things. And that's why we have quite a bunch of what's called Chef cookbooks. Um, these Chef cookbooks 
um, basically are uh, code that uh, takes care of a specific domain or service. So as you can see, there's a kernel cookbook here or a load balancer cookbook there, a mega raid cookbook or a MooseFS cookbook. And uh, all these cookbooks then contain recipes, which are the actual code files that get executed. So with um, by splitting things up into separate recipes, you can either um, separate specific aspects of a service, or you can um, simply modularize your um, code a little bit. And so there is not a syscontrol cookbook in there, but uh, we do use the uh, open source syscontrol cookbook. And I think that's from our security cookbook. Let's take a look at uh, its metadata Ruby file because that will tell us its dependencies. Uh, this one only depends on SSH, interestingly enough. So it might even be in a more generic cookbook and that's our roles cookbook here. Frysteel, by uh, the way, is the name of my company, Frysteel IT Limited. We are a distributed team of operations experts. Uh, the company is, as I am, based in Ireland, but uh, the team is spread across Ireland and Germany. So let me see what the Rolls Frysteel cookbook has in store for us. Uh, there's also no syscontrol. Interesting. Um, now I'm almost out of guesses where it could actually be. So uh, what I'm going to do instead is do a um, rip grab about uh, syscontrol. And there is not only a security co um, cookbook, there's also a system cookbook. And that's where syscontrol comes from. Okay, uh, I did overlook that earlier. That's uh, down here, almost at the bottom. And um, here in metadata RB in line 19, there's the result, uh, no, in line 20, there's the syscontrol cookbook that we pull in from the uh, open source repositories. Um, basically uh, what, what's called the um, chef supermarket of course as a chef uh, where you get your ingredients if you don't uh, make them yourselves um, is from a supermarket um, chef has this nice little thing that it uh, uses this uh, kitchen metaphor almost um, beyond uh, what's what's good um, it's it's funny but uh, it also makes uh, things much harder to Google. Because, uh, for example, the command line um, uh, utility for chef is called knife. Um, and uh, you try Googling for chef knife um, monitoring or something. Um, uh, that yields a lot of strange and uh, uh, not very helpful search results. Okay, let me uh, do a little bit of housekeeping here. All right. So, System uh, is our cookbook of choice. And uh, I guess uh, I simply have to take a look at how this syscontrol cookbook works because I don't think we actually uh, to reference it in here, do we? Uh, let's see. Um, we have this uh, dependency. We include this is control recipe in system recipes default. That makes sure that uh, uh, the actual code that's in the syscontrol cookbook gets pulled in. And then we have different cookbooks, like this Sensu cookbook, for example. Um, that uses syscontrol as well, um, but uh, only to make these changes on the fly, apparently. 
Everything else happens in what's called node attributes. Every server on which you run Chef is um, considered a node, and each node has its own set of um, attributes, which are basically key value pairs um, that can um, also um, span across arrays or hashes. And um, in there, we can actually uh, add values that get picked up by the syscontrol cookbook. And uh, I'll simply look up how this is. Um, uh, this needs to be how this needs to be configured. Sys control cookbook. Mm, and uh, I have actually no idea. These are personal cookbooks. But I'm pretty sure there's also a more official cookbook. I guess it's this one that's on the supermarket. And uh, let's take a look at the source. It's un unfortunately it's not maintained anymore, but it does does its job. Mm, and uh, so, what do we need to do? I'm not even sure if that's what we actually do. We don't use the syscontrol parameter um, resource. Maybe we should, but... Uh, I'm pretty sure we use node attributes. Let's see. Uh, the cookbook itself actually doesn't have any uh attribute files that would set any default values how strange maybe we do use a different one hmm It must be the one that's on the supermarket. Ah, oh, it's deprecated because it's a core resource in Chef 14, and uh, we still use uh, Chef Client 13 on our machines for backwards, comp backwards uh, compatibility reasons. Um, let me take a look at uh, our actual infrastructure. I'll do that off screen. Mm. Yes, there is a params. No, there's a sys control. Um, namespace for node attributes. You know what? Uh, if this uh, cookbook does use um, these node attributes, which I'm convinced it does, uh, that would be happening in the default recipe. But uh, this version here obviously uh, doesn't have any code in it anymore. So let's uh, go to the most recent version here. Still there isn't any attributes file, interestingly enough. No, that's not it. Add a default recipe that tells you not to use the default recipe, interesting. 
Uh, so let's go back one tag, 105 here, doesn't really matter. Let's see what happens in here. Oh, come on. I'm pretty sure I'm in the wrong place. But that can't be because uh, we do pull in the Control cookbook and that will happen from supermarket. Now that's very confusing. Maybe I should take a look at the version that we are actually using. So that's going to be version number 0102. isn't even in here no that's this one here okay and uh, still no attributes directory but let's take a look at recipes default yeah so what it does it it accesses the node attributes and the syscontrol key here under that the params key and then it simply iterates over what's in this params key under this parents key which um prob more or less is um a series of strings which it does split left and right to the equal sign and then it uh, calls its own syscontrol param resource where it does set the value v for the key k and it does it if uh, there is a syscontrol key in the node attributes which by default there isn't because this cookbook doesn't uh, provide any default attributes in this namespace and if there is a key params under syscontrol okay yeah, you can do it this way if you like. Um, which means that we actually only have to add a value to our syscontrol file. Let me quickly take a look at... Interestingly, there is a definition where we use that that doesn't seem to use strings. Let me see how this looks at a different place. We do use uh, key value pairs instead of strings. So we have a hash under params instead of an array of strings. But that's what this course attributes does. That must be a library function. Mm. Yeah, we have it. Yeah, okay. When we have an array, then it uh, returns a, a, a string with an equal sign separating keys and values. When we have strings or integers, then uh, uh, we take them directly. And if we have a hash, which uh, seems to be the mode that we've been using so far then it uh, maps key value pairs into a string okay fair enough
that means that we can simply go to project source for steel ops base role because that'll apply to all our machines as the description says all systems get this role and here we define a bunch of um, node attributes that need to be applied to all our machines uh, which uh, includes uh, package stuff and there's also syscontrol stuff so for um, for here we for example set the vm swappiness to um, one and uh, in this case, we need to do what? Mm, we need to set kernel unprivileged userness clones to zero, which means if we actually do this in hash form, then this looks like... Uh, Kernel. Uh, no, not panic 10. Good guess, though, copilot. Um, that's a kernel. Wait, what is it? Unprivileged user NS clone. Unprivileged user NS clone. And we'll set that to zero. Mm, now that I've done that, I thought a little bit ahead and um, realized, okay, um, now I'm going to run into an issue with uh, chef role files, because um, these role files get used both in our testing environment as well as in the production environment. And um, so if I change this role and upload it to our chef server, it's going to get applied to all our hosts uh, in one fell swoop within uh, the next few minutes. And um, oftentimes you don't want that. Oftentimes you uh, want to have this applied to a testing environment first to see if it does actually work like you intended it to. And um, only then, uh, once you've verified that everything is okay, then you want to roll it out in production. And that's exactly why we introduced the roles um, cookbook because uh, cookbooks are versioned while uh, roles aren't and I can pin different uh, versions of a cookbook to different environments um, and uh, so I wonder if it wouldn't be better to um, actually make this change in the roles frysteel cookbook which i can can roll out into our testing environment first see that everything is working and then do it um uh on uh, the production environment and the answer is probably yes so here in the physical recipe where we only call other recipes at the moment we could start to introduce use of the uh, system control resource. Uh, another thing that I immediately find more um, useful is that I can actually add comments here that um, explain what um, this code is for, which I can't in our JSON roles files where I can only list attributes but not comment on them so yes that's what we're going to do uh, I need to find out actually um, how to uh, apply this uh, let me see so now we are going to make use of this resource that we actually haven't before so that's simply sys control param and then uh, 
we uh, set the key and the value and that's it. Brilliant. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'll simply paste this here. No, not the CVE actually. Um, confusion. No. Let me copy this. Yeah. So. And uh, that's going to be kernel. Um, and uh, uh, this is. Ah, I see what's happening. Yeah. Okay. Um. Unprivileged user NS clone. Unprivileged user NS clone. And the value is oh. I should use my split keyboard more often. Um, the value is zero, and uh, we can actually comment here. Uh, now that Copilot, Copilot um, suggests uh, a comment named security, which is not bad of a guess, uh, I keep thinking maybe we should move this to the security um, cookbook. Let's see what we do by default in this cookbook. We simply call security rootkit, so that's the rootkit um, recipe in the same cookbook here. And security default will probably get called here. No, it doesn't. Interesting. Uh, does it get called in here? Yes, security without any uh, recipe name um, behind it means that's the security default um, cookbook. And so that gets actually included in Rolls Fry Seal. So yeah, I guess it makes sense to give this a, a context that's even less generic so i'll undo this change here and simply rely on rolls fry steel including security default and then we'll paste this here and we'll say mitigate uh, cve dash 2023 dash what was it uh, 23, 32, something like that. Um, let's see. Thirty-two, twenty-three, three. Thirty-two. I can't type anymore. Thirty-two, twenty-three. Thirty-two, twenty-three, three. 23, oh god, 32, 23, 3, okay. Does security include uh, syscontrol? No, it doesn't yet. Um, I could rely on uh, syscontrol getting called by uh, roles, Frysteel, and uh, which then um, actually depends on uh, syscontrol, but uh, I'm not going to rely on uh, uh, on transitive uh, dependencies like this. So actually, I'm going to simply copy that from the other cookbook. Um, yeah, I can see what's, what's happening here. We need to include some kind of... No, wait, where does this is control? get pulled in in the first place. Where was that? Oh, that's in the system cookbook. Yeah. 
Uh, we don't pull in the system cookbook wholesale, which we also shouldn't, but I'll steal its dependency. So that's here. And uh, that's uh, not the right one. That's Arsys lock. Not interested in that. Uh, that's uh, the security. And uh, that's actually in the right order. We do order our dependencies alphabetically, so SSH does come before syscontrol, actually. Good. Um, so the main change is here. And that's actually the case. And I could also start adding tests here, which is always a very good practice. Um, just as with uh, application development, infrastructure code should have tests as well. And um, the Chef uh, ecosystem does provide us with an integration test environment. Uh, it's maintained using the kitchen uh, CLI tool, of course. It's another um, kitchen metaphor. This time the kitchen, um, Monica itself. Exegete, welcome to the stack. Good to have you. Um, what's our KOTD, our kitchen of the day? What's the K in your KOTD? I'm probably uh, missing the obvious here. Keyboard of the day, of course. See, I said I, I'm, I'm missing the, the, the obvious. The keyboard of the day is a board source Lulu. Um, it's a variation of the um, classic Lily 58 layout. Um, so it's a 58% uh, keyboard, I guess, uh, or it's a 58 key keyboard. I'm actually not sure what the 58 does refer to, uh, to but uh, it's the uh, alphanumeric keys plus the uh, number keys and, of course, a row of thumb keys. Um, actually, I don't use all of them. I still um, keep myself to the uh, what's called the uh, five by three underscore three layout, which means I'm using the part without the uh, outer column and without the uh, uh, top column here so just the alpha keys plus three uh, thumb keys on the bottom so we don't use this these outer columns we don't use the uh, upper row and we even leave off the outermost thumb keys since i'm using uh, layers extensively uh, the remaining keys are more than enough um, and uh, they let me um, keep my fingers near the home row all the time Exactly, just to keep my fingers in those central locations, so I uh, don't have to stretch any finger more than one key uh, to the side or up or down. I don't have to move, for example, my um, right pinky up two rows to the seven. Instead, I simply um, press the thumb key that switches on my number layer and then um, I have a, a numpad on the left hand so the uh, upper left key in this numpad here which is the W key will then get me a 7 which means um, I press the thumb key and then I reach with my uh, ring finger up to the W and then I have my 7 which is only um, uh, one finger movement and only by one key row. Because the, and yeah, I need to move my thumb, my right thumb, one key to the right as well. Um, okay, I was talking about tests. Uh, let's create a test slash integration directory here. And uh, for starters, we'll simply use the default um, name for our test suite, which uh, does test the uh, default set of attributes. And um, 
in there we will have our default spec test file we also need to reference that in the kitchen.yaml file again for everyone who's who's watching join us in our discord server the exclamation mark discord command will give you um the uh, address it's www.obsitive.com slash discord and in we are chatting in the stream chat channel so here we actually have um already a definition for the default test suite which is interesting because um it's actually missing from the repository so no one has ever called this uh, test suite because it doesn't exist yet interesting rj welcome to the stack good to have you thank you for stopping by how's your day so far exegete what has been your win of this this day so far let me uh, improve my posture here um so yeah interesting um we need to make a few changes i think to the kitchen file don't we is this up to date I actually need to compare that, for example, to the Rolls Fry Steel definition here. Uh, yeah, we need to change that. We need to use different uh, images. We do use the generic slash Ubuntu something images and uh, not the Ubuntu slash codename images anymore because we are in the process of well we mostly switched from um, virtualbox to kvm as our virtual machine hypervisor which um, runs the virtual machines we need for executing our integration tests so and in this uh, test here which should start with a frozen um string literal snippet here we should actually test if this control does have the setting that we need uh, and uh, for that i'd like to find out if inspec which we are using to run or to verify our tests um, does have some means of testing this control settings otherwise we'll simply execute this is control command and it should actually output what we expect. Um, but let's find out if uh, inspec has some kind of a resource that lets us uh, query the uh, syscontrol settings in a more um, abstract way. So there is a kernel parameter method where we can actually um, see if uh, a specific path has, has a specific value I think that's exactly what we need right uh, to test kernel parameters these parameters are locked oh that that's uh, for proc command line okay that's not exactly what I'm looking for but my search doesn't give me any more specific thing. Uh, before I continue looking this up, let's catch up with chat. Exegete writes, I have no vins. I've been awake for about 20 minutes, already picked up dog poo from the living room and waiting for Kido to get up. Oh, of course. Um, yeah, well, that was stupid of me to ask uh, for your wins if uh, you're just getting up. I forgot that it's uh, the very early morning for you over there. 
And RG, RJ wrote, I've got the week off. Congrats on that. Our friend came over with her two girls. One of them is our goddaughter. We all went to the farm. Lots of fun and fresh air. Just chilling out. Oh, that sounds amazing. I need to get outside uh, uh, later as well. The sun is shining outside. There's a little breeze going on. And uh, yeah, it's not too hot outside. I'm going to enjoy going out later. Arj is the same here. Kido is out of school, so doing some staycation action. Ah, what's going on with you guys? Isn't anyone working anymore? RJ writes, I love godparent duty. They're, they're five and just over one years old, and both of them are adorable. But it's good to give them back at the end of the... That's, I think that's uh, always the best deal, if you get to take care of... Uh, um, kids of uh, relatives or friends uh, they're nice and uh, it's it's nice if you have your own kids and they play with each other and uh, have a lot of fun and uh, maybe you get to to join the fun as well for example in the summer doing some kind of a water fight or something and uh, uh, then there comes the time when you think, okay, now it's time for them to get picked up again, and they their parents appear and take them away. And uh, especially if you're a godparent, uh, then you have the rest of the day for yourself and uh, don't have to bother with any tantrums um, uh, at bedtime. That's, that's the most amazing thing. Exegete writes, you're not stupid, time zones are stupid. Yeah, that's that's uh, true, and I agree, but um, still I should have uh, uh, remembered that uh, there hasn't been much day yet where you are. Oh, I, I can relate, RJ. I can relate. Huge project. Having to deal with project managers. I had to deal with lots of project managers back in my day. The real project manager kind with... Uh, with wallpaper-sized uh, Gantt charts. So, um, while, yeah, as we mentioned earlier, uh, from Chef 14 on, there is a built-in syscontrol resource. I guess there is no um, syscontrol check built into um, inspec. Let's make sure that's actually not the case. So let's go to the inspec website here and simply scroll down. Since this is uh, sorted alphabetically, we'll quickly see if there is some kind of a syscontrol um, resource no there is not there is a sys info resource but i have a hunch that's not that not what we are looking for operating system no that's that just gives you information like the the system's host name and things like that okay All right then, uh, then we'll um, uh, build a home homegrown um, test by simply querying the syscontrol command. You can do that too. So uh, in this case, I'll um, describe the uh, command syscontrol um, kernel dot, uh, let's see if I remember by now. Um, kernel uh, and then it was something something uh, user ns I still can't remember unprivileged user ns clone okay unprivileged now you got it um, and then uh, this commands standard out exactly 
Thank you. Yes, I have added GitHub Copilot to my NeoVim plugins, if you have been wondering. And uh, I've only started using it, but uh, it's, it's really intriguing, isn't it? Okay, um... Yeah, it's it's more or less my first impressions. I did install it uh, last Saturday and uh, did a little bit of markdown writing uh, on Sunday. Um, yesterday, I seem not to have done any coding at all. Apparently, at least I can't remember. Wasn't the most productive day. Um, and so uh, I think today is the first time that I'm actually using it for coding and not for writing prose. And um, yeah, the way that it anticipated that I want to get a, a regular expression that tests what I'm actually um, querying here, and it even uh, 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 anticipated that I wanted it to be zero, um, that's pretty impressive. Exegete, you are priceless. Thank you for the plug of our Obsative BBS community forum. Um, yeah, um, our exchange uh, on Copilot over there uh, was really great, and uh, I'd love to uh, follow up on that. And of course, I'd like to invite everyone to join us uh, on the Obsative BBS. Um, and uh, if I did what I was supposed to do, there should be a community command. Yes, there is. So join us on uh, obstative.com slash community. There you can sign up either with a free account or if you'd like to support me a little bit, you can get the support account, which is five euro per month. And uh, so you are at least in part God, these prices um, are sponsoring me a uh, venti chai tea latte per month. You don't have a modem? Well, good thing that this new BBS is not um, uh, depending on a dial-up connection. You can actually reach it through the web. <laughs> but of course, yeah, it harkens back to the days of, of yore. Uh, I did run my own BBS. Um, I still run my own BS, but um, back in the 90s, I uh, ran my own BBS. Um, it was called the Nuclear BBS because uh, the uh, town where I was born was uh, next to a nuclear power plant. And um, I had a lot of uh, joy being a sysop. Uh, that's that's actually a, a, a topic in and out of itself. Um, remind me to get back to that at the end of the stream, which isn't too far away, I just noticed. We are already one hour in. I didn't want to spend this much time on uh, this change, but um, there's always too much things I need to refresh my memory on and, and uh, re uh, research, like if there is a uh, test resource or, or if I need to use the command resource to, to build my own. Well, anyway, uh, let's go ahead and uh, run this test. Um, we need to change into the, uh, what was it? Security cookbook, right? Here we are with these tests. Uh, I should be able to list uh, the instances that we have. There's an instance default for Ubuntu 20.04. That's the one I'm going to test here. So let's run test kitchen converge. Um, default Ubuntu 20.04. This cookbook doesn't do too much. So uh, spinning up this VM and uh, executing the uh, uh, infrastructure code on it shouldn't take too long. So, uh, getting back to the um, BBS topic, uh, I actually considered running a real BBS as our community platform, but then I um, thought, well, that might be a little bit over the top and, and asking too much 
of people uh, to actually use some kind of a terminal software to uh, actually connect to our um, community platform. So in the end, I uh, decided, yeah, let's let's keep it web based. Okay, which is interesting. So why? Oh, I see why. Um, well, I have a hunch why this is breaking. Uh, it should be able to install RK Hunter. Uh, 146, which it doesn't find. So, uh, the usual reason is that this image comes with an outdated package list, which pretty much means that we have an outdated image as well. And I guess at the beginning of this convert run there should be some comment that uh, our image is outdated let's see no there isn't No, it says a newer version of the box for provider libvert is available. Uh, there is, we have a 4214 and there's 4216. And that's why the um, um, package lists that come with our um, image here um, don't reflect reality anymore. So I need to run Vagrant Box update to update that. Uh, we are talking about generic Ubuntu 2004. So I guess I should be able to run Vagrant Box update dash dash box generic slash Ubuntu 2004. Actually, it asked, have you looked at the apps you can build in the terminal with SSH and Charm? It's Golang, but I'm super impressed with that too, and have debated trying to build a BBS with Charm. Um, yeah, um, uh, the stuff that uh, the folks over at Charm are building is pretty amazing, and they actually made me consider writing my own um, BBS software in Ruby, of course, um, not using the... Uh, uh, charm bracelet and things like that. Uh, there are uh, two uh, gems for Ruby as well, and uh, that's one of the projects um, I'll have to put on my bucket list. Things that I want to build eventually when there is finally a little bit of spare time. So now we have uh, updated our uh, image here, and uh, I'll go ahead and destroy the current VM so we can get a new VM built with the updated image and that then shouldn't have any um, package installation issue anymore. A workaround would have been uh, spinning up this um, virtual machine, logging into it, um, updating the package list uh, by hand and then trying to run Chef on it. But um, since we uh, need to um, run this in CI as well, it's better we actually update things. And it's still breaking, which is interesting. So one thing I should do probably is to go into the um, kitchen.yaml file, which um, defines our um, setup here. And there is actually a, an option that always updates images automatically. I'll just have to look it up, how this uh, actually works. Um, so kitchen, vagrant, auto update. Uh, let's take the chef documentation and then... Uh, is it box check update? That's just checking, right? Uh, uh, 
Mm, don't think that's it. Let's go back to the GitHub's repository. Well, it references this page anyway. Okay. Setting up Hyper-V, default boxes, support uh, using configuration. Here we go. Uh, box check update. Here, box auto update. And we'll set that to true, I guess. Box auto update. I should have done this um, right away. Box auto update uh, true. But uh, it looks like this uh, wouldn't fix things anyway, because now we are using a current image, aren't we? And things still break. So checking, yeah, and it says 4, 4 to 16 is up to date. So that's not the issue anymore, and which means I have to actually Lock in my virtual machine by hand. And I guess apt show RK Hunter. We'd like to install 146-8. And that's actually available. At least it's in the package list. And if I say apt install RK Hunter, oh wait, maybe, yeah, that's not actually the the issue, isn't it? Uh, we do install a RK Hunter, but the error messages are bin utils utilities uh, libctf. Uh, those it can't fetch. I guess it did fetch RK Hunter, but it didn't fetch the other stuff. From securityubuntu.com Alright, so I guess I can always try and install that manually. And that fails too. Okay. And if I do a an up update... And try it now. I mean, we could actually try and have Chef install everything now. Let's see if it works now. This pause probably means it downloads and installs a bunch of packages now. So it's still an issue of the package list not being up to date. Even though we we are now using uh, the most recent uh, image, but uh, reality has again deviated from it. And the only way to mitigate that, and yes, it did now uh, succeed, and it did write a um, file ninety nine chef kernel unprivileged user as clone.conf where it sets kernel unprivileged user as clone to zero which means if you run the verification phase where it executes our test we should get a successful test here nice um uh, i was i was about to say the only way we can actually mitigate this um, package list issue is um at least for uh, our test environment, we need to actually rely on the apt cookbook. And that's why I'm adding this dependency to what's called the Burks file. Um, uh, the uh, developer who um, built this uh, dependency management tool didn't want to use uh, something like cookbook file because that would only have uh, made searching for these things um, even harder. Um, so um, 
he basically uh, got inspired by the Ermagerd uh, meme and called didn't call it a book file or something like that, but a Burks file. Um, which makes uh, search is much easier because um, searching for Burke's file does give you uh, valid results. So uh, I'm not add adding this dependency to the metadata.rb because it's not an official dependency. We don't really um, need um, the apt cookbook in production, but we need it to get a proper test environment apparently. And uh, then I uh, have to add uh, the uh, apt default recipe to our test suite which i can simply do by adding another recipe to this um, array here where we call apt default um, in our test suite rj asks they do know what a burke is though right i don't know what a burke is would you like to enlighten me Since Exocheat has retracted his Burke GIF, I have no idea what uh, what I'm getting myself into now. A Burke? I have no idea what... I, I don't think I've ever heard. It's English slang for an idiot. You Burke. Really? I mean, I, I, I've heard a lot of uh, derog derogatory... Uh, um, names so far living in Ireland, but uh, I never heard of someone being called a Burke. Interesting. Exactly. That's the, uh, by the way, that's the meme that I was referring to. Yeah, the Ermagerd Burks GIF or GIF uh, as is apparently the uh, official pronunciation to my chagrin. All right, uh, let me see if uh, this uh, little workaround here does do what it's supposed to. And we'll do that. Uh, actually, the uh, third window here is confusing me. We don't need that anyway so let's close that down then we uh actually oh come on mm. and destroy this it should log us out in the window below no it doesn't it just freezes it uh let's see that's uh what is it control a k no shift k no that's always kill pain. Okay, mm, now TKC default again with a fresh image. It's not massively common, but it's a thing. Okay, TIL improved my vocabulary today. Yeah, it's these little things like um, dealing with outdated package lists that tend to steal your time. Guess I'm not going to get to working on my course material during the stream today. But still, doing valuable work anyway. This needs to be done so our, we can uh, actually have peace of mind. Oh, I'm still slipping in my chair here, and uh, I think I do have a little sip of coffee left. Cold, of course. And this time it did um, finish, so adding the apt dependency to our test environment did work as expected. I love it. <laughs> yes. Yes. Having your pie all um, being used by all kinds of people. Yeah, I can imagine. 
hope you're not paying for traffic. And yes, um, well, uh, the lesson you, uh, you can take away from that is definitely um, do not run a DNS server um, that's available publicly if you can avoid it. Uh, and do avoid it at any cost. Because um, uh, running DNS servers is really... Um, that, that will uh, cost you time and nerves and maybe sleep. It's so easy because DNS servers always run on UDP port 53 and so um, it doesn't take a port scan uh, more than a second to find it um, and uh, then you have to deal with all kinds of crap. Good! So if uh, Test Kitchen Converge does work, uh, our Verify should only take a few more seconds. Yep, that's that. And uh, that means that we have successfully built a mitigation for CVE 2023-3223. Um, and uh, all we have to do is a little bit of uh, housekeeping, which means we need to um, rake bump uh, minor for this cookbook. Then we need to fetch the new version, which is 3.1, and add a changelog entry. Version 3.1.1. And uh, we are using the added keyword here. Um, and here we actually write mitigate. Uh, CVE-2023-3 uh, 3223 and uh, change that to added so we always have um, the same form. It's added, fixed, or changed. The only thing that uh, doesn't fit the uh, the rule is breaking. So uh, yeah, it makes sense to add our current date as well. So that's uh, dash o five dash. Uh, what day do we have? It's twenty uh, ninth. 30? What are we? Yeah, 30. Interesting, yeah. So that's that. Um, and uh, that should make it possible to do a full test suite from linting and style checks to um, running everything. There is no 310. Yes. Uh, that's supposed to be an O. Here we go. And there is a style issue in both metadata RB where it says file read is safer than IO read. Well, yeah, I'm happy to change that. Interestingly enough, uh, it didn't uh, show me in editor. And then, um, in default RB, we have single quoted uh, strings. Yes, 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 yes. That's because I copied it. Uh, didn't write it myself. But that's easy to fix. And then uh, redundant string escape uh, in the FS recipe, where we actually. Yeah, we don't need to escape back. Uh, uh, Wait, what? Oh, oh wait. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, 
Yeah. No, oh, that's a said command. Let's see. Oh, interesting. We do need these uh, escapes, though. Because Sed needs them escaped. Not sure if this implementation is the best way to go. I don't think I've seen that before. But uh, it's out of scope for this change. Um, I guess we do need to... Um, what do we need to disable? Style redundant string escape. Redundant string escape. Here we go. And enable it again. I guess that should take care of things. And then a uh, food critic complains that we include a syscontrol, even though Chef14 does provide us with uh, the syscontrol resource built in. Uh, the trouble is we don't use Chef14 yet, and so uh, I need to disable check FC121. And that's what this dot food critic for, uh, file is for. Uh, 121, right? I, in my memory is shot today. One to one, yes. So once again, we pass Rubocop. We do pass Food Critic now, and so it's going to run our two test suites: one for Ubuntu 16 and one for Ubuntu um, uh, one for Ubuntu 20. Uh, for Ubuntu 16, we haven't updated the uh, um, image yet. And now that I've set out auto update to true, it does automatically download the latest image. Yes, that's exactly what we want. We need to introduce this auto update into all of our cookbooks uh, over time. <laughs> hey, Learny Vency over on uh, Twitch. Could I share my key map? Of course I can. Um, let me uh, give me a minute. Um, and uh, if you like, join us in Discord. Um, let's see. So let me get back. I, uh, oh dear. Uh, no, I'm getting everything confused here. So you need to move down here and you need to be full screen again. And uh, now I need to go. Oh dear. Here. And let's go to github.com slash gwiz slash qmk underscore firmware, I think. 
Uh, here we are, and then we'll go to the uh, Jeeves branch, where I have all my personal um, key maps and uh, the Lulu key map is at uh, board source. Uh, where, is it? where is it? Oh, board walk, board source, Lulu, key maps, GUS, keymap.c. Finally, well, let's uh, copy that. And uh, will I be able to paste that here? Yes. And for your convenience, I'll paste it over on uh, Twitch as well. <laughs> okay, test suite did finish successfully. Yep, uh, no VMs left. So that means our change is actually finished so uh, that's feature uh, security mitigate CV dash 20 23 dash 32 23 Oh, we are in a completely wrong, um, completely wrong uh, branch here. Da, 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 da. So, uh, git undo. Mm, and uh, we need to actually get master branch. For latest changes. Uh, da, 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 da. And then we need an issue number. Let me see what issue number this is going to be. Well, I guess we need to create that issue number first. I'm always confusing stuff here. No idea what's happening today. Talking and, and typing seems to be a challenge today. Well, it's probably one of these days. Um, what I wanted to do was go... Here. And um, there is an issue that I created earlier. Mitigate CVE 2023. Um, I've created that in the shared infra um, repository because um, I didn't want to uh, be... I wanted, didn't want to preclude the... Uh, type of uh, solution um, we needed to take. So I didn't create it in the cookbooks repository, but in the shared infra repository instead. Question is, do I move this to the other repository or do I um, create a new one? Or do I create a related issue? I guess that's the way to go, right? Um, we have an issue in our infrastructure, so I'll add it to shared infra. Um, then after investigating this a little bit, I come to the conclusion that it needs to be done with uh, uh, Chef, which isn't, of course, uh, hard to tell. It was pretty clear from the beginning. But anyway, I'm just trying to get a general thought process that I can apply to each and every one of these issues. 
Um, so I created in shared infra and then I stopped thinking about things. Um, when I do um, start thinking about things again, I realize, okay, this needs to be done using a chef cookbook. So I create a new related issue, but that creates a new issue in shared infra. That's not what I want. Um, it's a way to move it anyway. Doesn't look like it, right? There was a way to, 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 to move issues though. Is that an edit? No. Hmm. That's strange. Okay. So we'll take a different approach. So I'll go here and I um, guess I create a new one in here. New issue. I reference the uh, parent issue here. So that's uh, shared infra. That's how you write that, right? And we'll simply write mitigate CVE dash twenty twenty three. And now I can be more specific. Uh, Epic is going to be general maintenance or ongoing maintenance. Label is um, security. And of course, also the uh, cookbook slash security. Uh, iteration is going to be this week's iteration. Due date was, uh, we wanted to have that fixed by the end of the week, which is going to be June 2nd. That's that. Mm. I guess the syntax is shared infra slash 41? No? How does this work? Hmm. Let's try again. Shared infra. It was 43, right? Preview? Nope, that doesn't generate a... Link. I thought there was a way to... Ah, see, it approves to shared infra. But if I write it that way, it doesn't work. Okay. Hmm. Anyway. <laughs> two, 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 two. Um, that's that. So now we have our issue number 846, which we can use to branch off. 846 or CVE. I'm not going to repeat the CVE number. Uh, and it's going to be... Um, mm, that's a fix, I guess. Security. Mitigate uh, CVE, and now I have to repeat it. 2023-32-2023. Is it a fix? It doesn't fix existing code, though. Is it a chore? Is it a feature? It does improve things, so I guess it's a feature. And now we can push this, which is going to spin off a merge request. Buddy boom. 
uh, that oh, that's going to open in a different browser so uh, let me just quickly get the changelog entry Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'll write a little comment in this change. Using the mm, syscontrol resource instead of the node attributes because I'm handling this from the Because I, I wanted to handle this in a cookbook instead of a roll. So that's that. So we need to get away from uh, adding node attributes that we can't version to cookbooks that we can actually roll out in a controlled fashion. Uh, that's uh, security and one more, create merge request. CI should already have picked this change up and uh, so we should be able to see that. Uh, bu -bu -bu -bu. So there's a new merge request in here. <laughs> I just started. Okay, let's keep this running. Um, okay, so I guess we're coming up on two hours. So I'm not actually going to uh, start something new. I might do a little bit more work later, but uh, not on stream. So I can get outside a little bit. There's still 18 degrees, which is nice. Um... just see something flash across my screen or am I having hallucinations hmm, no idea anyway um, oh, I'm completely confused today so there was something that I, uh, we wanted to talk about wasn't there um, what was that uh, da, 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 da. Uh, was it the BBS topic uh, I, I mean, it was, could have been even earlier, no? Oh yes, uh, BBS. Um, so, um, yeah, back in the day, um, mid-90s, I think, um, I uh, got the urge of uh, running my own BBS after using BBSs for a while. Um, so I got my first modem sometime in the first half of the 90s and uh, started visiting BBSs and, and using mailboxes and things like that. Um, got into this uh, first kind of email uh, and uh, chatting with people online and I really, really liked it. And uh, it was amazing to finally be able to talk to people, not only outside of my hometown, but even outside of my home country. Um, and um, so, uh, yeah, this was fascinating. And um, recently I read a great book called The Modern World, 
which does sound like an OCR error um, from uh, by uh, of, of reading the modern world, but it's actually the modem world. So it's a, a whole book about um, the um, the era of uh, BBSs and uh, modem-based um, communication. And it's a great book because um, it really covers how these early communities came together and um, really connected people, created safe spaces for marginalized people. Um, there were, uh, for example, BBSs for with with lots of very valuable information about AIDS, um, and. Uh, While uh, back then, of course, uh, uh, there were uh, the usual marginalized people um, and uh, not the least women, um, uh, the, the modem world was uh, again um, dominated by white men. Um, but um, I think, and, and the, the author... Um, uh, makes a point of um, pointing this out. Uh, uh, the community, the sense of community back then was much better than uh, in today's uh, web-based communities, um, and especially, of course, in in today's walled gardens like Facebook and things like that. And uh, the author also points out that the role of a sysop, for, of the system operator, of the owner of a BBS. Um, uh, really taught people um, to build communities, to uh, manage interaction between people, manage conflicts and things like that. Um, and uh, so I definitely uh, count myself, uh, myself among the people who really learned to do what today would be called community management. Um, curating your own um, BBS content, um, getting people to connect to your BBS um, and to to keep visiting it and to contribute um, public messages and things like that. So you actually uh, drew in people. Um, and uh, that's definitely what inspired me when I thought about uh, building up my own learning community on Obsitive. Uh, it definitely does inspire what I'm doing uh, using Discord. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely drawing back from these early experiences of building and maintaining my own. Uh, well, I didn't build it, but I, yeah, I built it up. Uh, I didn't code it myself, but I built it up. Um, uh, my own BBS back in the 90s. Actually, she writes, I don't feel like you have community when you kind of choose to see the posts only from those you follow. Algorithmic timelines kill the sense of community. That, that's a good point. If you get bombarded by stuff that uh, um, you're not actually interested in. And if you can't limit uh, your interactions to the set of people that you'd actually like to interact with. That's something that I really hope we can achieve uh, using the Discord server and the Obsidian BBS forum, um, that we can actually um, have a more tight-knit community and group of people who share common interests. Um, and uh, yeah. That's why I debuted the ham stack on Twitter yesterday. Uh, since I don't um, perambulate Twitter anymore, um, would you like to elaborate what the hamstack reference is, actually? In the meantime, my um, test has been successful on the CI system. I guess I'm going to leave the merge request open for the time being, simply so um, the team can see what I've done here and what should be uh, the way to solve these things going forward.
Hey, activity monitoring and mail brew. I see. Count me intrigued. Let's see. Let's let's try and get this on the screen. Um, if I can actually left. Why can't I right click on this link? Very strange. Well, copy it by hand then. And I guess we can simply reuse one of these tabs. And I can't um, actually uh, open this. Why can't I? Uh, let's see. What's going on? I clicked the link and a different window went up. Okay, that's that's really strange. What kind of window is this? It's always a little bit complicated with uh, different resources used on stream and outside of stream. And. Uh, Let's see. I actually can't. Oh, maybe it's because I'm trying to copy it in, in OBS where I have a... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, th I think I know what's happening here. Um, let's see. I'll copy it from my own Discord client. Uh, da -da 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 -da. String chat. And here the uh, right mouse button does actually work. Yeah, I had a, a dock in OBS with the Discord chat and that doesn't provide me with all the um, user interface functions, apparently. Uh, so let's see if I can paste this now. Still can't? Because it's a different... Because it's a different... Uh, Different X server. Okay, uh, that's. Uh, I'll I'll type it in um, if necessary. But um, give me one more second to simply try and. Uh, no, I'm not going. Oh, I copied the message um, link, and I'd like to copy the link. Okay. No, I think I've solved it. Uh, that doesn't work, but uh, middle button click does work. Uh, now I've clicked it twice. And can I undo this? Yep. Yeah. Okay, finally. Sorry for the delay. So let's see. I do know what you mean with hay and mailbrew. I do use mailbrew myself and activity monitoring. Uh, no, no notifications. Thank you. Hay's take on email is unique. You decide what email you see and in what priority. You get newsletters, recap email in your feed rather than your inbox. Um, yes, and I'm using um, the Spark email client on my iOS devices and it uh, works in a similar way. Banish distracting emails to the paper trail and reserve your inbox for actually important emails from humans. Yeah, that makes sense. And um, uh, I do enjoy a uh, filtered um, mailbox a lot without the whole um, notifications and order confirmations and of course the whole LinkedIn spam and stuff like that. Makes sense. If Hey um, helps you um, focus more on the human interactions, um, more power to you. Then activity monitoring. Sit down and think, really think about how much social media you'd like to consume in a day and set a limit on your devices. Don't measure first, just set the limit you want. Have a hard time sticking to it? Have someone set a pin if you go over. Yeah. Um, again, um, I only have experience with iOS devices. Um, screen time does actually uh, help with that. Um, and uh, I don't have the issue with uh, social media as much because um, I spend the most time curating my uh, Mastodon timeline for the uh, Obsidian account. And that's not only just uh, uh, doom scrolling and uh, social media mm, distraction, that's more... Um, uh, 
trying to uh, build up relationships and, uh, of course, uh, make people aware uh, of what we do at Obsative. But yeah, activity monitoring, uh, limit um, the stuff uh, you want to do to a uh, to a, um, to an amount that's that's healthy and helpful does make sense, and uh, that's uh, very much um, emphasized. For example, in uh, Cal Newport's book Deep Work, um, where um, Cal basically says the same thing: set limits for your social media usage and uh, make sure that you don't just do this shallow stuff, but also, um, but more importantly, uh, focus on uh, doing deep work. And that's exactly why this is the title of the book. And then there's Mailbrew. Can lump together all your social media, email, newsletters, RSS feeds. Yes, I do use it for Reddit too, so I don't um, fall into that rabbit hole. Um, that uh, Mailbrew is really, really useful to simply get you a daily digest of um, the most important posts and things like that. Helps with FOMO, but gives a limited window with only allowing a certain number of posts per email. Different emails per subject. Yep, okay. So you do separate um, topics and get an email about Ruby and get an email about Go and things like that. Is that the way you use Mailbrew? Having a small child, this has really helped me get off the internet and focus on what's important, which is, at least in part, your kid. Yeah, makes perfect sense. Maybe it'll work for you too. I can uh, confirm um, most of what you said by my own experience, yes. Or from my own experience. Mm -hmm. Valuable advice, thanks, Ajit, definitely. Daily Digest email of many things, and then deeper dives into Ruby, Dino, and SecOps. Okay. Maybe I should um, take a look at my um, brews um, as well and uh, see if I can restructure them to get more out of it. Because at the moment, I only get a daily digest of a few Reddit, of a few subreddits, and that's more about the FOMO thing. Um, most of my uh, useful stuff I uh, get by, uh, via RSS feeds by now, and uh, I've more or less switched from uh, pure RSS readers over to the Readwise reader, which um, allows me to do uh, read it later stuff with articles, but uh, can um, also pull in RSS feeds, so um, um, I can quickly skim my feeds and push everything that I'd actually like to read over to my read it later list, and then I can read the stuff that I'm interested in, and uh, since uh, the Readwise reader is, of course, um, connected to the Readwise base product, which is um, uh, collecting all your highlights. I can actually highlight pieces inside of web articles and have them preserved and not only archived, but also um, have them pop up in my daily Readwise reviews, where I get 10 uh, random highlights um, displayed every day. And uh, these are nice reminders. And also, if you are following me on Mastodon and on uh, fosterdon.org slash Obsative, um, that's also where um, these quotes come from that I keep posting. Uh, these are uh, highlights that um, reappear in my daily Readwise reviews. Exit right. Uh, I also have the Dino one set up so you can subscribe from Dino Lab. Actually, I'm not a. Um, um, I'm not familiar with Dino Lab. I'll have to uh, take a look at that too. What is Dino Lab? Ooh, that's that's uh, a blog. Nice, cool stuff. Okay, so uh, 
Yeah, yeah, makes sense. Okay. Oh, uh, that's a nice idea to to uh, interlink these two things. Okay, mail brew and. Uh, Oh, uh, it's always inspiring to to see other people, uh, how, how other people um, uh, create their stuff. And uh... cool, cool, cool. Thank you for that. All right. So that brings us to the end of today's stream. Again, if you'd like to. Um connect outside of streams, join us on the Obsidive BBS. Uh, if you'd like to support me uh, uh, financially a little bit, um, consider getting a support membership for five euro a month. If not, simply uh, get a free membership to the Obsidive BBS and um, uh, join a bunch of friendly people who talk about all kinds of DevOpsy stuff. Also join our Discord, which uh, obviously we are using during streams as well. And uh, yes, so it's a new week. This was the first stream for this week. The next one is planned for Thursday afternoon, 2 p.m. Irish time, 1 p.m. UTC. And uh, then it's up to you to look up what that is in your time zone. And... Uh, um. Then there's also going to be the Obsidive Office Hour on Friday afternoon, again 2 p.m. Irish time, uh, where um, it's up to you to bring topics and things because uh, it's an hour of chat um, and questions. If you like, um, bring your questions about Linux system administration or you'll be coding or software engineering in general or IT careers and things like that. Whatever you'd like to discuss, um, bring it to the Obsidive Office Hour on Friday. So I hope um, you enjoyed this stream. I did. Thank you for chatting and thank you for taking part. And I hope to see you on Thursday, Friday or anytime soon. Until then, take care.